Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we worked on our tower abstract class, but we're not really doing that much with it yet. And that is all going to change. And just so you know, what I'm showing on the screen has nothing to do with what we did last time. I'm just making a cool design. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to change that. And by that, I mean not using our abstract class to its full potential because we're going to make tower types. So you'll see here I have our tile type enum open right here. And we're gonna do something similar for the towers. And we're gonna make an enumerator that just kind of holds all the data for every type of tower that we wanna make in the game. Because remember right now our goal is to make it as easy as possible for us to add towers uh, later on with little to no overhead, right? So the goal is that eventually when we're done building these like foundations for making new towers, We'll be able to one day just be like, you know, would be a cool tower, you know, maybe something that is green and yellow and shoots lightning bolts that, you know, hit multiple enemies. And in a few lines, we can just create that tower. Uh, you'll need to make a texture, obviously. And then boom, it's in the game. So what we're doing right now is really just preparing ourselves to be able to have that kind of framework where we can easily just create a tower from an idea and not have to like update, you know, 10 different classes, update the enemies, like, okay, how do the enemies get hit by this tower, update the game, like, how do we update this tower? We're trying to make it all uniform so that we can easily just create new versions of towers without having to update a bunch of different classes. So one of the ways we're going to do that is by creating a tower type enumerator, just like we made our tile type enumerator, that holds the data for these different tower types, and we're going to use that in conjunction with our tower abstract class that we worked on last time. So we'll start right off by going to new enum and naming it tower type. And we can actually just copy or not copy, but cheat off of this tile type class if we ever get lost and know how we're going to format these kinds of enum classes. So first, let's go ahead and put the variables that we need to hold our towers data. Now, when we make any tower, we need a few things. One is we need a texture because it can be drawn to the screen. Let's go ahead and can we import that yet? Or is it going to say, yes, we can. So import the texture there. We also need, we'll put our damage in here. So an integer for our damage. And something else is we need to know where we're going to place the tower on the screen, correct? Well, that's not something we can really put inside of an enumerator because the X and Y position of where we place our tower is going to be directly depending on where our mouse is at the time that we create it. So we can't really put that inside of this class here because it's going to be changing for every time we make a new tower. So this class is just for the things that no matter where the tower is are still going to be uh, the same every time. So texture, damage, and now let's go ahead and make an example tower up here. Uh, we'll just name it cannon red and it's going to take a texture which is quick load cannon base and damage we'll just say is 10 right now quick load will need to import so we can do that statically import static helpers dot artist dot asterisk right there and we're going to get an error because we don't have a constructor yet right it's going to say it's undefined so if you look at our tile type enum you see here at the bottom we have a constructor that automatically takes this data up here, like say for grass and dirt and water and our null tile, and automatically uses that constructor to set those uh, data points to the correct variables. So we're gonna do that right here. Right at the bottom, just say tower type, and it takes a texture and damage, just like all of our other constructors, and just say this dot texture equals texture, Oops, and this dot damage equals damage. And now you can see that error goes away. So that's how easy it is to make an enum. Now we're gonna spruce things up a little bit here. We're gonna change some stuff around. That was just kind of an example on how to do a simple one here. But one thing that I really wanna change is the way we do our tower textures right now. Right now it's really just kind of like held together with scotch tape and glue, and it makes no sense. You see here we have a base texture, and then here we're just arbitrarily loading cannon gun for a second texture and then uh, down where we draw we're drawing one of them like this and other one right here and hmm you know this is going to be interesting first let's go ahead and go through 
what I was planning on doing here. So for the tower types, we know now that our towers are going to have more than one texture usually, right? Like just one texture for a tower can be kind of boring. That means there's no moving parts unless the entire thing spins. So let's change this from a texture to an array of textures and name it textures, make it appropriate. Textures, textures, textures. And now inside of our quick load, we're actually going to say new texture, put that the little brackets there for an array, open bracket and close bracket right here. Oh, and this needs to be an array. So mark that as so. So what we're doing here is we're passing in an array of textures. Right now it's just one texture inside the entire array. The array is in between these two brackets here. But what if we want to pass two? Well, it's easy. We just put a comma after that parenthesis and do another quick load. In this case, it'll be quick load cannon gun. And so now we have both of our textures, the base and the gun, being easily passed through this constructor and saved in an array of textures for this cannon red tower. So let's go ahead and put a comma right here and return to the next line. And you can see how easy it is to make another type of tower, cannon blue. Just set the exact same way, cannon texture, open bracket, quick load, cannon base blue, quick load, cannon gun blue. And for damage, just to make it different, we'll make it 30. So we can tell that they are different. Uh, make sure to put a closing bracket right there and the air should be gone. And so you can see how in the future, we're obviously gonna add more stuff to this than just textures and damage eventually, uh, such as speed, firing speed will probably go inside of here as well. But you can see how easy it is. We can now create entire towers and the data for those towers just in one line per tower, uh, at least with our simple you know, red cannon and blue cannon example. So next, let's go ahead and go to our player class. This is where we're actually placing towers in the game. So we're gonna make some adjustments in here. And the first thing we need to do is we're still using this outdated tower cannon class. And it's outdated because we're now using this tower abstract class that all of our towers are gonna to inherit from or extend this class. So let me show you what I mean. Instead of having a list of tower cannons, which means we can only ever have tower cannons in the game, we're just gonna make it a list of towers. And so it's named appropriately now, tower list. And we need to update that in a few places. First off, it's a new array list of just tower, not tower cannon. Down here, for every tower in tower list. This method does not exist in our tower class yet, so just go ahead and comment that out. Set tile, we're never gonna use in our player class, so we can just delete that line. Tower list add. Now here, we're using our tower cannon constructor. What we really wanna use is our tower class constructor right here, which just takes a texture, X, Y, width, and height. And you know what? We're gonna change this constructor around a little bit right now. Uh, we don't really need an X and a Y, or even a width and a height really, because if you look at our tower cannon class for the constructor, we are not passing any of that in, but it's still working, right? So that should be proof that in theory, we don't need to pass all of this stuff in the constructor. What we can do instead is you see in our tower cannon class, we're passing in a start tile. So we're passing in a tile in the game world that our tower will start on. And for our X, Y width and height, we can actually get all of that data from that one tile. So let's go ahead and erase all of this oops, erase all of this and just put tile start tile. And we don't need to make a variable up here to hold our start tile because we don't need it later. We're just gonna draw data from this and set it equal to the appropriate variables up here. So for example, for our X, we'll say this.x equals start tile dot get X. This dot Y equals start tile dot get y width i'm not sure if our tiles have width or not as a public variable we'll see start tile dot get width they do uh except it's a float is that what it's saying i think we should change that in our tile class actually let's go to our tile class here and hmm 
Let's see how easy this is to change. Let's make our width and height integers, private int width and height. And when we pass it in here, pass in an integer for width, integer for height, and our getters and setters are gonna be incorrect now. So just uh, make this an int and this an int. And now our getters are also returning floats. So let's just change that to int. And where's our get height? Here it is, int. There we go. That way everyone's using width and height as an integer. So it's nice and uniform. So this.width equals start tile dot get width. This dot height equals start tile dot get height. And now just using the start tile in our constructor instead of x, y, width, and height, we've abstracted all of that data from that one tile. Now we're gonna do something else here too, because remember we're passing in more than one texture for each tower. And normally we'd have damage in here as well, but instead we're gonna do something similar where we just pass in our uh, tower type that we just created and we can then take the data from that. So instead of texture here, we're gonna pass in a tower type that I will just call type. And we also need to update our texture to an array of textures, which I'll name textures. And we need to set this.textures equals type.textures. So that would be the textures that are part of this tower type, whatever we pass in. So if we pass in, you know, Canon Red, then our textures will be equal to Canon Base and Canon Gun in that order. So let's go to our tower class again. Uh, you know, we can also set our damage or here as well. So let's do that uh, right up here. This dot damage equals type dot damage. Uh, target, we'll worry about later. Textures, we have equal. Now let's go to our draw method, which is outdated now because we're not using just texture. Instead, and this is how it gets a little bit hairy with rotating textures. We might work on that next time. We'll see. For int i equals zero, i is less than textures dot length i plus plus, and go ahead and indent this line. And we're gonna load textures at i. So this is just a normal for loop. You know, we're gonna go through all of our textures that are instead of our textures array for this specific tower, and we're gonna draw them in order. That's why it's important when you make a new tower to always have the base first and then the gun on top. So we might have like more complex towers later on with like, you know, multiple spinning parts and, you know, reticules and all this crazy stuff, like all around it making it look really complex and, you know, good looking towers that might have like four textures per tower. So it's important that when you make a new tower, you have, you start with the lowest texture as in, you know, if you're looking down at the world and then kind of build up on top of that. Uh, so that is our tower draw method. Let's go ahead and go to our tower can in blue. We need to update that constructor to kind of mirror what we have here, which is a tower type and a start tile. So we can get rid of all this stuff here and put in a type and a tile and just type in type and start tile. And it's as easy as that to update that. We no longer need this. So we can get rid of that. And now back to our player class. So this is where we're adding new towers to the game. We're still adding tower cannons, which we don't want. We just want to add a regular tower. And see what's really cool about having a abstract class for our towers is we can put all of our different towers into one list, into one array list that we can kind of cycle through and draw and update. Before we had a list of tower cannons, which was only one specific type of tower, but now that our new towers are gonna to be extending this default tower class, this super class, we can put you know our missile towers and laser towers and electric towers and arrow towers and slow towers and fire towers and whatever, all into one list of towers because we know that they all have the same update method and the same draw method. So we know we're not gonna break anything and Java allows us to kind of just collect all those different types of towers into one list under tower. So we're gonna add a new tower here and we could actually, we should say 
We'll add a new tower cannon blue. And it takes not a texture, but a tower type dot cannon blue. And a tile, which we have there. And we're not doing enemies yet. We're going to reintroduce that. Uh, but for right now, we can get rid of that wave manager and that damage right there. And perfect. We now are adding a new tower cannon blue to our game. Let's go down to the other error. Here is when we press the T key, it would randomly place a tower like up at the tile 18.9. Uh, that was for testing, so we can get rid of that. Just go ahead and delete this entire part right there for the T key. And we have another error right here. Something with, do not have a, too many parentheses? No, what's wrong here? Oh, there we go. So three closing parentheses. And our errors are gone. So let's see if this worked. First, let's add t.draw right here. Now, if this worked, we'll be able to place the blue version of our tower cannon anywhere on the map by clicking the tiles on the map. Uh, it won't be tracking enemies and shooting enemies, you know, the more advanced functions that we haven't added yet, because if you look at our tower class here, our super class, our update is still completely blank. But it should draw both of our textures in the correct order, and it should appear with the correct blue textures, not the red ones. So let's go ahead and go to our game and try it out. All right, cool. So it looks like it worked. So we have our blue cannon towers here. And just as a preview for how easy it should be for us to switch this, if we just change this from cannon blue to cannon red and play, we now have our red base texture and a red gun texture. Of course, we're still making it a tower cannon blue and just passing in the red, you know, phenotype, I guess. Um, and the reason we're doing tower cannon blue, you might ask, because even though we're passing all of the data, such as the texture and the damage within our tower type, the reason we have subclasses like tower cannon blue is that we can extend this tower. We're not really making good use of it yet, because right now all we're doing is we're not really extending anything. We're just saying, you know, use the tower constructor. But we could add methods that are specifically for our tower cannon blue class, like, you know, blue enemy fire. This isn't even a real thing. Don't type this. But the point is that we could extend beyond what our tower class has by adding specific methods just for our tower cannon blue tower in this class. So if we had a tower that, say, slowed enemies, that's where we would put that slowing mechanic. We wouldn't put it inside of the super tower class, we'd put it inside of here. And that's why we still have this class, even though it might seem kind of useless so far, uh, we're going to be making better use of this in the future. Uh, but for now, I think we're going to stop there. Next time we're going to introduce those advanced, you know, tower cannon methods such as acquire target and is in range and all that, like firing mechanics and projectiles and stuff like that, tracking. Uh, we're going to work on introducing that into our tower super class. So thank you for watching and I will see you next week on Indie Programmer.